Hey everyone, in today's Wrath of Math lesson, we're talking about something pretty straightforward. We're talking about underlying graphs of directed graphs. So the underlying graph of a directed graph is a pretty simple concept. Let's quickly sketch a simple directed graph. We'll just look at a three cycle. No need to get too complicated here. Throw down some vertices, and we will call these vertices A, B, and C. Now, of course, we want this to be a directed graph, so let's go ahead and add some direction to these edges. I'll actually use a different color to uh, make it a little easier to see. I'm not feeling the red. Let's do orange. Let's do orange. We'll settle on the orange. So we'll put a direction there, direction there, and direction there. So now we are looking at a digraph. Remember that the edges of a digraph are called arcs, and they are represented as ordered pairs. So, for example, this arc here from the vertex C to the vertex A is the ordered pair C A. So the edge set of directed graphs contains these ordered pairs. The other two arcs in this directed graph go from C to B and then from B to A. Then the underlying graph of this directed graph is really simple. Just get rid of the direction on the edges. And so what remains is an undirected graph with the same vertices and undirected edges wherever there previously were directed edges. This is the underlying graph of the directed graph. So that is the simplest way to think about underlying graphs. Add some direction back in there. The underlying graph of a directed graph is created by just getting rid of the direction on the edges. So we're just left with undirected edges. However, you might realize upon thinking about this a little bit that there is some room for ambiguity here. What happens if instead of just having an arc going from A to C, we also have an arc going from C to A? If that happens, then what does the underlying graph of this directed graph look like? The answer is that there are two possibilities. The first possibility is that we sort of just stick with the words of the previous definition. Just get rid of the direction on all of the arcs in the directed graph. What this leaves us with is a multigraph because we've got two edges joining the same pair of vertices, which are called parallel edges. And if you want to hear more about parallel edges and how we actually capture the information of parallel edges in a multigraph, check out my lesson on parallel edges. I'll leave a link to it in the description. So that's one possibility. And then the other possibility of dealing with this situation is, of course, anytime we have two arcs joining the same pair of vertices, we reduce them to a single edge joining that pair of vertices. And so defining an underlying graph in that way will always leave us with an undirected, simple graph. Now, any time I have seen an actual rigorous definition of underlying graphs, this is how they're defined. So this would be that definition. If D is a directed graph or a digraph with vertex set V and an edge set or arc set A, if that's a digraph, then the underlying graph of D is the graph G, which has the same vertex set, and an edge set E containing the edge UV only if the ordered pair UV is an arc of the digraph D or VU is an arc of the digraph D. This definition of underlying graph just says to get the underlying graph of a directed graph, just take the same vertex set, and then for the edges, any two vertices that were joined by one or two arcs in the directed graph, Join them by a single edge in the underlying graph. Again, this definition of underlying graph does not allow the underlying graph to have multiple edges joining the same pair of vertices. So then once more, redrawing this directed graph, if we apply the above definition, then the underlying graph of this directed graph is created by getting rid of the direction from the edges, so we're left with undirected edges, and if there are two edges joining any single pair of vertices, get rid of one of the edges. And so we're left with an undirected simple graph called the underlying graph. Now, if you wanted to modify this definition of underlying graph so that the underlying graph could be a multigraph, then you'd have to say something like, 
if exactly one of uv or vu is an arc of the directed graph, then uv should be an edge in the underlying graph with multiplicity 1. But if uv and vu are both arcs of the directed graph, then their end vertices in the underlying graph should be joined by an edge with multiplicity 2, which really means they should be joined by two identical edges. And again, if you want to hear more about multiplicity of edges in multigraphs and how we actually capture that information in the definition of a multigraph, check the description for a link to my lesson on parallel edges. And we will leave it there for now. So once more, if we have a directed graph, we can find the underlying graph of that directed graph by deleting the direction from the edges so that we go from a directed edge like uv to an undirected edge like the two element subset of the vertex set containing u and v. And then also, if there are two edges joining any pair of vertices, get rid of one of them so we are left with a simple undirected graph. However, be aware that some authors may allow for the underlying graph to be a multigraph. And so if there are two arcs joining a pair of vertices in the directed graph, then in the underlying graph, there will be two parallel edges joining that pair of vertices. So as always, we need to be aware of the definitions being used, but I hope this video gave you a good basic idea of what underlying graphs of directed graphs are. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. It smells more like a web of codependency. I'll chain you there. It seems like both choices suck, so I'm stuck.